here. I don't need much. Well, again, good morning, everyone. Happy Easter. Uh, just a joy to have you all here this morning with us. Uh, this morning is going to be starting a four-week series. Uh, the overall title of it is Paid in Full. Paid in Full, which Dixie just sang. Uh, we were the ones that deserved to be on that cross. But our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ says, no, Father, I'll, I'll, pay, I'll pay that debt for him. And he did. He went and he died on that cross. And, and Satan, I can just imagine him celebrating, Woo! he killed the Son of God. It's just so good. I just, oh yeah, oh. But all of a sudden there was a knock on his door. And he's saying, don't answer it. Don't answer it. It might be for me. It was Jesus saying, give me the keys. Give me the keys to hell and the grave. Because you know what? You're a loser, Satan. You've lost the battle. Well, <coughs> this very morning that we celebrate our risen Savior, let's open up with a word of prayer. If you just all bow with me, please. Lord, thank you for sharing your one and only Son with us, so that through him we could experience eternal life and redemption. Let us hear again from that victory, faith, and hope available to all who believe as a result of Christ's resurrection and ascension from death to life. Again, Happy Easter and Amen. 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 Have you ever stood in a cavern, maybe up at Florida Caverns up here in Mariana, and just kind of shouted and see how many times your voice would echo? You know? Have you ever done that? Yeah. Well, can you imagine the ladies that went to the tomb that day looking for Jesus, and they stuck their head in there, and it was empty except for an angel? And he says, you seek Jesus, but he's not here, he's risen. And amen for that, amen? amen. Well, well, come on now, you've got to be happier than that. Amen? amen? All right. He's not there. He's gone. Just like he told us he would. But you know, if he would have still been there, we might as well go home and go fishing and go play golf, right? I know, I don't know what you need, but just... <laughs> You know who you are. Uh, <laughs> got caught playing golf on Sunday. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, <coughs> over 2,000 years ago, that echo is still going. He's not here in his grave. He's risen. He's risen. He's risen. What a way to start a celebration today of our risen Savior with the baptism. And Michael, I'm, I'm proud of you, buddy. You got him up out of the water. <laughs> We're all wondering, or he's a pretty big fella. And, uh, well, it was Maurice, I'm glad you're up and able to walk after that. You know, he usually holds people under longer than that. He dunks them totally bubble. Yeah. That was good. Michael did a great job. You didn't help him at all, did you? A little bit? Okay. <laughs> all right. I kind of thought that. That's what I told Michael. I said, tell Maurice to help a little bit. <laughs> yeah. It's, it would have been awful if we had to call 911. You know? We got somebody stuck in the pool. <laughs> then we'd have to get the firemen in the pool and we'd have had this one. Michael, you'd have had your big baptism then. You know? All right. Well, that ancient echo is, is <coughs> here this morning. Like I said, we're still looking for Jesus. And I hope you come here this morning wanting to meet with him. Because, you know, we have 6 o'clock in the morning when we started this. And you know the greatest thing of all? Jesus is here with us. Amen. Amen. Yes. That is the greatest thing of all. To knowing that wherever we are gathered in his name, the Bible says he, he's there too. Wouldn't it be terrible if he wasn't here with us? It'd be kind of like a glee club or something, you know, just gathered here to sing songs. <coughs> We'd be singing any kind of songs, you know, you wanted because it would mean nothing 
if he wasn't here. It'd be sad. Well, as we get going today, we're going to read through this Easter passage. And uh, I'm going to read now Matthew 28, verses 1 through 10. Matthew 28, verses 1 through 10. If you've got your Bible, please open up to the passage and follow along. Uh, I'm going to be reading from the New King James Version here this morning. Now, after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to uh, dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. His countenance was like lightning, and his clothing as white as snow. And the guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. But the angel answered and said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. Praise God for that. Yeah. And as he said, Come, see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And indeed, he is going before uh, you into Galilee, that you will see him. Behold, I have told you. So uh, they went out quickly from the tomb of, and with fear and great joy and ran to bring his disciples the word. The one, uh, and as they went to uh, uh, tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, Rejoice, for they came and held him by the, the feet and worshipped him. When Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brother to the Galilee and where they will see me. Thank you, Father God, for that. Thank you for your written word. Well, it's this is a traditional passage for Easter, and you're probably familiar with the angel uh, arriving like an earthquake and rolling away the stone. His appearance was like that of lightning, and it, he is so terrified that the guards of the tomb, that they fell over as if they were dead. They just fell over. You know, when we come in the presence of our Lord. Doesn't our heart tell us how near He is? How close He is to us always? Do you feel that? You know, it's kind of like when you first started dating your, 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 your wife or your girlfriend or whatever. And when you, when you are near her, like, like uh, Luke Skywalker, wasn't it said in the, this, all those space movies? You can feel the force, huh? You can feel the force, the power of the force. Well, that's the way Jesus is. When he's, around, when he's near you, when he's in you, when we accept him as our Lord and Savior, there's power in that force. The greatest force in the world and beyond the world and the whole universe is our Savior. Wow! <laughs> Think about that. Did we not just read this a little bit ago from the, from the scripture reading about we are now sons and daughters of that power? Or do we just say, woe is me, misery and despair. If it wasn't for bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. Well, I'm going to tell you something. I don't believe in luck. I believe in divine appointments by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And you know what? When you've got him as your Lord and Savior, uh, it's what, what weapon can form against you will prosper? None, the Bible says. <coughs> if God be for you, who can be against you? None, the Bible says. That's my God. That's my God. You know, instead of telling God how big the, the storm is that you're in, and we all go through storms, amen? amen? You know, in our life, some, you know, sometimes, I don't know what kind of storms you, you might even be in a storm right now, because sometimes it seems like we're either in a storm, just got through a storm, or getting ready to go into one. But, you know, instead of telling God, oh, Lord, this storm's so big, I think we need to start telling that storm how big our God is. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's what we need to start telling. You know what? God is there with us. 
in these storms that we go through in life, whether it be health, financial, or whatever, God is there. We need to start tapping into that, that strength. I like it when Jesus says, fear not. Fear not. I think this is told when the supernatural comes in the presence of something natural. Fear not. Oh, I tell you. I still remember the day when I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. And it was a little fearful. Because I was not used to that. Knowing that God is here with me. As he's with all of us that are born again Christians. Now, you know, you might be sitting here this morning and, and you don't feel that. And I'm talking about that, that heart and your, it, it, when Christ is near you. So near that our two shadows are one. I don't mean keeping him at six foot distance like we had to do during the COVID. I guess some places they still ask for a six foot distance. I don't know what six foot has got to do with it. Now, I guess that's where they figured the germs can't make it. They can't jump that six foot, you know. But I want <laughs> Jesus closer than that. I want him here in my heart. A lot of people have him up here in their head. Oh, I can quote scripture. I know the Lord. I heard all about him. But you know what? Uh, you can miss him by 18 inches. Amen. And that's from here to here. This is where you need him in your heart. And this day, this Easter, what a great day to, to accept the Lord Jesus. What a great day to be baptized. Amen. I remember one year when I was pastor in another church, I baptized five people Easter morning in Round Lake. You all know where Round Lake is? Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you what, it was cold that morning. <laughs> cold that morning. Well, I didn't care. I had waiters on. <laughs> but one guy came with a wetsuit. Yeah. And you know what? It's almost impossible to get somebody under the water with a wetsuit on. I always had to put my knee on him to get him under. And all that effort, I kept him there for a while. You know? he, we still laugh about that every time I see him. But God was there that morning. As he was, as he's here this morning with us. I get it. I guess I better start preaching my sermon here now because it is a pretty good sermon. I don't want to waste it. All right, number one is the echo over victory of death. Over death. He is not here. He is risen. These words shattered the chains of death and despair, ushering in the triumphs of life. A lot of people today suffering from depression. You see it in the news a lot. A lot of these crimes that are being committed, they're blaming it on depression. You know, I think really we need to realize that God conquered that. God conquered that. I know I, when my, my wife died, my first wife died of, of cancer, I went through a bout of depression in my life. And if it wasn't for God being there with me, it would have been really super hard to get through it. So I'm not laughing at anything, anybody that has it. But I'm telling you what, God is still there for you. Through it all, through it all, I learned to trust in Jesus. I learned to trust in his name. And that's what we need to do. Put our total faith and trust in him. <clears throat> Folks, I ask you, I beg you, if you do not know him as your Lord and Savior, during the time of invitation this morning, I pray that you would come forward and accept him as, as your Savior. And you know what? We'll show you what it means in the Bible to be saved. Not our thinking, not, not our ideas, what God has to say about it. 
what God has to say about being saved. Well, as Charles Spurgeon said, by his death, Jesus destroyed death. And by his resurrection, he has torn away the gates of the grave. <coughs> I, uh, I've had the honor and privilege of being with folks when they pass from this life. Christians as well as non-Christians. And I want you to know something. It just seems like at the very end, they see things that the natural world cannot see. The non-Christians has not been very nice. But when the Christian passes away, some of them got smiles on their face. You know why? They knew where they were going. And I had one young man, and I tell this story so many times, and if you've been here any time at all, you've heard it probably several times, but I'm going to tell it again right now. His name was Michael. 18 years old, he dove into water and had a swimming accident and broke his neck and was a paraplegic. Uh, for 20-some years, he couldn't move, except his finger. But when he was passing away, we were up in Flowers Hospital, not Flowers, uh, Southeastern, and his family was in there. And he says, Mom, Mom, do you see him? Do you see him? Charlotte says, Honey, I, I don't know what you see. I don't know what you're talking about. The angels, Mom, they're here to take me home. And he passed away. Now, I don't know what he's seen. I don't see in that realm. But he did. That's why my pastor mentor, Willie Butler, always told me, he said, when you go into a hospital room like that, don't stand at the foot of the bed. So out of curiosity, I said, Willie, why is that? He said, that's where the angels stand. That's where the angels stand. So you'll never see me standing at the foot of the bed, especially after the experience of Michael. And you know what? We're all going to meet death one day. The Bible says it's appointed on man wants to die, and then the judgment. Amen. But we need to make sure that we're ready for that time. We need to make sure that we know where we're going and who's coming to escort us there. Because when I close these eyes in death, I want to open them to see the face of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Oh, I'll tell you. What a day that'll be when my Jesus I will see. Amen. Well, through his death, death, hell, and the grave was conquered. All right. The next one is echo of unwavering faith. Echo of unwavering faith. Yeah, the, the life of discipleship is the Hebrews 11 reminds us a walk of faith. Now faith is confidence that we, what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. And like I said, I couldn't see what Michael seen. I don't know, but I couldn't tell you he seen him. That was the important part. That was the important part. It wasn't my time to see him. It wasn't my time. But who knows when that time, when your time will be. Who knows? Are you ready? Amen. Are you prepared for that? I talked one time in here in Thessalonians where it talks about the rapture of the church. And I told him, I said, listen, folks, you need to be prayed up, packed up, and ready to go up. And some of thought that was a cute little saying. Well, it's so true. It's so true. How do you go on a trip without being prepared? You know, how do you, when Dolly and I, we've we been married two years now? Almost. Almost two years. It'll be two years in May. And by the way, this is my bride, Dolly, up here, in case you, you don't know her. I want to introduce you. When we went on our honeymoon, we went on a cruise to Alaska, and we had to prepare for that. Dolly, Really had to be I mean, packing this, packing that. You know, me, I just give you a little AWOL bag, you know, like we used to call them in the Army. AWOL bags, this little thing, that's enough for me. 
the poor porters, I think they got a hernia from carrying her bag. <laughs> yeah. But she was prepared. Prepared. Are you prepared for your trip when you go to leave this world? Are you? Oh gosh, I hope I am. I hope I am. That's the way I am. Oh gosh, I hope I am. You know, Dolly's trying to tra train me to prepare, how to plan. Guys, that's hard, isn't it? For us, it's, ah, that's enough. All I need is a whole pair of socks. We're only going to be gone for a week. That was funny. I thought it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> but we need to have that unwavering faith, unwavering faith, that we know one day we're going to see Jesus. Amen. We know. And the Bible says he's gone to prepare a place for us. If it was not so, he would have told us. And if he goes and prepares a place for us, he will come back for us. I'm paraphrasing there. I hope you realize that. But he is coming back. Amen. Wait, wait, wait. I only got one amen on that one. He is coming back. Amen. Okay, these folks on the internet that are watching us here, they like to hear the big amens. You know? Okay. Well, Again, verse 10 says, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Because when I see Jesus, I'm going to know him. Oh, not the pictures that they paint and try to, you know, <coughs> the, the artist's rendition of what Jesus looks like. But I'll know him. Amen. You know how I'll know him? Amen. By the nail prints in his hands. By the spear that was in his side. Yes. By the nails in his feet. Mm -hmm. Where he was nailed on that cross. Where he was nailed on that cross. Like Dixie saying this morning, that should have been me. Amen. That should have been you. <coughs> Pay that sin debt. Because the Bible says we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. We owe that debt. A debt we couldn't pay. Jesus paid the debt. He didn't know. Amen. You know, somebody was telling me about, I don't remember who was this last week, I think it was, about paying it forward. How they went up into the, and to, to pay the bill at one of these drive through restaurants. And they said it's paid for. It's all paid for. That's the way it is with our sin debt. It's all paid for. What does that mean to me? It means to me I better try harder. It means to me I better not forget to ask for forgiveness of my sins. Because we all sin. We all sin. That's what God's Word says. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. But only through his death, burial, and resurrection is that paid for. Only through that. And that's what we're celebrating this morning, this Easter morning, that he came up out of that grave. He's no longer there. There's no bones in that grave. It's an empty tomb. It's an empty tomb. Okay, I'll get back to my sermon again now. Like I said, I don't want to mess it up too bad. It's pretty good. All right, here's the one here. The next one is Echoes of Eternal Hope. Echoes of Eternal Hope. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. 1 Corinthians 15 20. You know, Christ raised Lazarus from the dead. He raised that, you know, that woman's uh, son when it, the casket was going by and he had him raised up there. But the one thing about Lazarus and all the others that were raised from the dead then, they all died. They had to die again. But Jesus is still alive. It says the Bible says he's sitting at the right hand of God making intercessory prayers for us. You know, people call me, 
said, Pastor, I need prayer. Would you pray with me? Sure. But when Jesus is praying for you, folks, that's powerful. Amen. What? Amen. Amen. God, you guys make me begging for you. I'm telling you what. You work for you. Come on. That's powerful when you think about it. The Son of God, our Lord and Savior, making prayers for us. <laughs> I'll tell you, if that doesn't give you a good feeling, if that doesn't make your heart happy, you better check your ticket because I think it might not be working. Yeah. You better check it. Well, you know, this morning has been kind of funny because we changed the changed the order of service around that we're just not used to doing it to what you know, we ain't never done it this way before. You know what church <laughs> say? We ain't never done it this way before. And uh, we may never do it this way again. <laughs> but it's, it's, you just know that we're human, that's for sure, through it all. Well, as Apostle Peter says, Praise be to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, with great mercy he has given us new birth and a living hope uh, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and also and into an inheritance that can never perish spoil our faith. That's 1 Peter 1, 3 and 4. Never spoil our faith. Never perish. Folks, I believe once saved, always saved. Amen. I believe that once Jesus said, what God has put in my hands, no one can snatch them out. Amen. You remember the old commercial, you're in good hands with all state? <laughs> I'm in better hands with God. Amen. That's the hands I want to be in. That's the hands that we all need. To be in. Well, in just a moment, we're going to have our invitation. And I, I truly want you all to think about this, because we're going to have our Lord's Supper here shortly, too. I want you all to start doing a little inventory of where you stand. If there's something in your life that is barring you from direct communications with the Lord, I want you to ask for forgiveness this morning. Before we hand out the elements, please, please, search yourself. Can I get Herb and up here for the Lord's Supper. 